What's there to be upset about if you're making 35 million bucks? How much? 35 million. Damn. As scary as that was, as quiet as the gym was at Villanova, Xavier freshman point guard Edmund Sumner doesn't have as much as a concussion, even though he was knocked out cold. You know, filling in for Elise is like filling in for Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> Big shoes for sure. Oh, yeah. Dusty Baker says he doesn't sleep much and didn't realize how tired he was until he took his son fishing in New Mexico for some R&R &R over the All-Star break. Marvin Lewis would much rather have a Lombardi trophy in hand than a Hollywood script, but what a script it would be. And for his part, Cozart is well ahead of schedule coming back from that devastating knee injury. Here in Washington, D.C., the White House is, of course, where the president and his family lived during his term as commander in chief. And Barack Obama is a big college basketball fan. The book Game Six by Mark Frost tells an interesting story. There was a camera operator behind the green monster who was dealing with some kind of rodent. And while he was trying to shoo the rat or the mouse away, the camera actually followed Carlton Fisk down the first baseline by accident. A famous shot, one that's part of the mystique of Fenway Park. I'm Zach Wells here in the Black Hole in Oakland, California. Maybe the most avid fan following in all of pro sports. This guy's hometown is Atlanta, Texas. Do you know, I'm gonna give you a hint, an NFL executive that built a Super Bowl champion that's also from Atlanta, Texas. Ted Thompson. Of the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. If Hollywood taught us, Tom Hanks and a league of their own, that there's no crying in baseball, a young kicker at Franklin is having a blast as well on the gridiron, fitting for a trailblazer to ply her trade with her feet. If you were to grow out the bangs, we could get you some gel, do that new Dalton thing you that a lot he's of got gel. going. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be the most popular guy in Cincinnati, even more popular than you are now, because you'd be a dead ringer for Andy. For at least another season, January 6, 1991, will stand in the record book as the last time the Bengals won a playoff game. It is the longest drought in the National Football League. With the Bengals in Houston, Zach Wells for Local 12 Sports. Let's go back to you. You know the old joke about college students and their sleeping habits? Make sure you're awake by the crack of noon. That didn't exactly apply to Ohio State and Notre Dame. Not on Friday, anyway. With an 11 o'clock kickoff, they were probably up after someone's paper route was over. If they could sleep at all. Lots of adrenaline for two top 10 teams in the Fiesta Bowl. It looks like a big spaceship in the desert, the University of Phoenix Stadium, and the Buckeyes flirted with nearly 500 yards of total offense. Michael Thomas looked like his uncle Keyshawn Johnson. The nifty move and the fight to the end zone, 14 0 Buckeyes. Joey Bosa may very well be the number one pick in the draft, but after leading with his helmet, he was ejected for targeting and later tweeted an apology to the fan base. The Irish pulled to within 28 to 21 on one of two Deshaun Kaiser touchdowns, a beautiful ball to Chris Brown. But Ohio State has an answer, an exclamation point, and a home run hitter who wears number 15. Zeke Elliott rushed for 149 yards and tied a Fiesta Bowl record with four touchdowns in a convincing 44 to 28 victory. All due respect to all the other great running backs of Ohio State history. Uh, I, I, my, five, my first round draft pick, I picked Zeke Elliott. He's, uh, he's, uh, what he does without the ball, his work ethic and practice, his, uh, uh, just his attitude every day, the way he shows up, bounces around with us, and uh, uh, I love him. It didn't really feel real at, for at least 30 minutes after it happened, but um, unfortunate. I'm happy we won because it's the whole point, you know, but um, it's just an awesome way to finish. This last play in Denver hurt for a couple of reasons. It maybe wiped out the Bengals' hopes of a first round bye, and A.J. McCarron left the field with a sprained left wrist. But the quarterback tested his non-throwing arm and hand in practice this week. And if the Bengals win and the Broncos lose on Sunday, Cincinnati can still claim a first round bye. You know, I, I feel like I'm a pretty uh, mentally tough guy. So, uh, you know, I've had a Played through a lot of injuries, so I think I'll be fine. Because there's still a chance to get a bye this week. So, uh, you know, all, all we can do is control what we can and uh, go out, play our game, win the game, and then, um, you know, uh, whatever happens in, in the rest of the games, it, it happens. Just as accountants need Microsoft Excel, quarterbacks 
need healthy throwing hands. And Andy Dalton told the Inquirer that he badly wants his cast off and plans to go to the doctor on Monday to see if his broken thumb has healed enough to do away with that cast and continue recuperating. Sumner to the hole and he got crushed. Well, nothing's going to be easy. Let's hope he's okay. He's day to day. I just think it hurts a lot. So he, he um, as soon as he's ready to play, he's going to play. And he's going to get the best care from these trained technicians. There's a concussion protocol that uh, every school in the country has. I didn't say he was out. As scary as that was, as quiet as the gym was at Villanova, Xavier freshman point guard Edmund Sumner doesn't have as much as a concussion, even though he was knocked out cold and spent a few hours on Thursday at a Philadelphia hospital. Coach Chris Mack said there was nothing malicious at all, just a contested layup in transition. Sumner attended Xavier's workout today at Cintas Center with his mother, but didn't take part in any drills. He is, as coach said, day to day. And what a difference a day makes from what we saw at Villanova, these harrowing scenes, to maybe playing as soon as tomorrow against Butler. Really grateful. You know, it was, it was good to see him at practice with his mom um, this morning. You know, uh, when I saw him on the floor, you know, just the worst runs through your mind. Um, and it was just, he was unresponsive for a little, you know, a little bit of time. And, and to see where he is uh, in less than 24 hours, um, just so thankful. You know, I was anticipating hearing about his recovery and maybe games missed or weeks. Right. And to hear that he's doing this well, especially when you're dealing with the head and the neck area. Just so fortunate for him and Xavier right. and the entire fan base. Thank goodness, because just one day, you know, has gone by. In the UC football locker room, the nameplates point to the future of Bearcat football, and one in particular, kick returner Ralph David Abernathy IV, holds a prominent link to the past. I have a dream today. To a time when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led the push for civil rights in the 1960s. Everybody has their cross to bear. Mine just so happens to be the Abernathy name. So I'm, I'm blessed and I'm truly honored to have such a man that changed the course of history as so close to my family. Ralph Abernathy died in 1990 before his grandson was born, a civil rights pioneer in his own right and one of Dr. King's closest friends and confidants. The two shared room 306 at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4th, 1968, when King was assassinated. These men, these circumstances, these times, no doubt bring on questions from people who never knew them. No matter um, death threats, no matter the uh, family issues, whatever, uh, whatever they went through, just what made him continue to say, I'm going to take a stand for what's in what I believe in. I'm held to a, a higher standard than the normal 19-year-old because my name is Abernathy. Um, that one mess up that the typical kid might have, I'm not allowed to have because I might end up on a new stock in the year. This wall outside the Bearcats locker room chronicles UC's bowl history that dates all the way back to the 1940s, but not one time until this season had a UC kick returner taken one all the way back in the postseason. What's going on here is Abernathy with a nice looking return. I saw a hole, followed my blocker. And he has a chance to go all the way. Until this year, in where else but Memphis, Tennessee, the grandson, Abernathy IV, took one back 90 yards against Vanderbilt, a history maker for the Bearcats, to put UC in front to stay in a 31 to 24 victory that brought this home in the carry-on luggage. But it was good for him, his family was there, and obviously, you know, being in Memphis, you know, it was very fitting for him and his family uh, to be able to achieve what he did, and it was awesome. And amazing, perhaps, the way things work out, that the city of Memphis, Tennessee, can connect generations of Abernathy's together for two very different reasons. In Cincinnati, Zach Wells, Local 12 Sports. What you say? I don't remember. Is your ankle hurt? Huh? Is your ankle hurt? Yours? Mine's fine, I'm sure. Yours. You look good today. Thanks, sir. Like How'd you hurt your ankle? Working like you worked. What's up? Yeah, you want to sign? I get you, I get you when I come back. Watch out, sir. If you hit the car, sir, please. <laughs>